Haven't been this low on Cosmic ever. I don't think I'm overly superstitious. The old double sapphire, double diamonds, triple, triple, double wild hand. Mm. Clearly decided we should play Comet Strike, right? We're losing with the decks we think are good. Okay, right. Trix is pretty good in this matchup. I think this hand's better than the average five. This hand's not good, but I think it's better than the average five is how you evaluate mulligans like this. No, I was referring to the, the control deck. Like, I was playing the control deck because I, like, kind of wanted to, like, try and ladder up a little bit. And instead, we just, like, slid all the way down for the, the ultimate good beats. Uh, the deck doesn't have answers to Gobbler. But a lot of the McBombus decks aren't also aren't playing Gobbler. So, like, I don't think you have to mulligan hands against Bombus that can't beat Gobbler. You, believe it or not, you can't mulligan for specific answers in the 150 card deck. It doesn't work out very well. So we're going to play that, and we get to cycle this shard prism for a diamond shard, or diamond threshold. Yes, Polly answers Gobbler. You are not wrong. You are technically correct. Which one could argue is the best type of correct? Yeah, he is playing Gobblers, all right. Just dead, probably. It's fine. We haven't had a Thursday afternoon of me getting just thrashed in a while, so... Oh, uh, yeah, super dead. At least this isn't costing us money in a gauntlet to get thrashed. That's nice. So we're going to put life drain and enter to play deals damage on the root dads. And there's lots of ways to gain. No, stop it. Lots of ways to gain extra life. All right. And then the dinglers and the purges aren't particularly great. And green paws not particularly great. And we bring in... Extra ways to fight things and kill us stuff. That's usually how I board this matchup, I believe. Uh, I don't think we've won. Did we? We we won a mat. We won like one of the first two matches, I think, with uh, with the Sapphire Diamond deck. But we've basically just gotten railed since then. Yeah, he's fine. He's got a Carnosaur. Immortal Tears can get us a second a second Wild Threshold. Alright, we hit that, so we can just go ahead and carn away his Thunderfield Seer here. Maybe this is a little aggressive, but I kind of just want to use my resources and gain some life here while this can't get burned out in response.
Kills my dork, makes a bumble bot and attacks. So, Immortal Tears is going to get us a Diamond Shard, I believe, so we can have two of those. It's got all of our thresholds, which is nice. So, we've got second Diamond here. We'll Shard Call for a Ruby in case we draw an Aborian Root Father. No, oh, I want a Ruby. Next turn we get to play Succulent Cluckadon and gain some life. The following turn we get to chomp on his Bumble Bot, which is nice. If he has Dob Gobbler here, we're going to be in trouble. It, this deck does not line up well against that card. We don't have our, a lot of our interaction, just doesn't do it. We don't have a ton of flying guys to block it in the air, etc. Just Rage Fire the Dome, sure. So. Clicking on is going to put us back above our starting life total, which is nice. Four four blocks this nicely. Actually, this four four is gonna be able to block it, so we're gonna be able to chomp, eat his one one, and then ooh, a piece of candy. So opponent hasn't had a super aggressive start, so we have a chance to chance to be in this game with our eight power worth the ground pounders for sure. Let's see if he's got this plus a burn. He might trade it for the Cluckadon. We are honing in on 10k, which is big. It's like over over double the amount of Twitter followers I have. I was kind of surprised at how quickly I picked up Twitch followers versus versus Twitter. I've been using my Twitter for a long time and only been streaming regularly on Twitch for like almost a year now. I'm doing well. Uh, both of the new decks that we played last night had some issues with them, but that's to be expected. So Chompasaur destroys a constant or artifact when it comes into play, and we gain life equal to the cards destroyed destroyed cards cost. So we destroyed a artifact Bumblebot and gained two since it costs two. Get to reach fire down my four four, crunch me for three here. Play a shard, make a bumblebot, crunch me for four. Seems good. So we're gonna leave Cluckadon back on defense next turn. That's true. I definitely think that, and that's definitely true. I think there's a lot of people that just, like, don't use Twitter because they don't have a need for it. I actually prefer Twitter to other social media like Facebook and stuff like that. It's harder for people to complain or show you how truly stupid they are in only 140 characters. Usually have to be, have to be clever to complain with that few characters. And you play this draw card. Uh, that's... Yeah, things are going less than less than ideal here. The old rage fire, copy it, and then the combat trading that draws a card into a shard that draws a card. So scale of one to dead, swiftly sliding towards the dead side of the scale. I said difficult, not impossible. All right. So what are what are the, what are we what do we want to draw here? Like cosmic shamans, not bad. Another shard, probably not the best. Uh, infinite tricks, and then maybe he won't be able to remove it. Could be an okay sequence here. Two shards, probably. Ooh, jank bot. It's too bad. We're probably just dead. I assuming he's just gonna kill us on his next turn. He's got. He's got a lot of draws that do it. Any rage fire just kills us on the spot. He's got a combat. He's got a draw step for the turn. 
burn. Okay, combat training on here. So we're not we're not dead to known information, but we could be dead to things that he picks up here. Dead to crackling bolt now. Yep, crackling bolt and rage fire both do it. Okay, that's still not dead. Yep, exactly dead before Jankbot can try and try and live the dream of pulling us out. Steadily, steadily sliding downwards today. Peace, Ace. Thanks for stopping by. All right, this should be a good matchup. Oh, geez, good matchup, Jinkbot in the opener. We won the die roll, the coin flip, whatever you want to call it. Oh, this is everything's coming up, Millhouse. Hong Kong, who we welcome. Get a sapphire here. Get aggro. Look, we're playing a three shard deck without Uzu. Shards of Fate's necessary evil. A Borean Root Father's in his deck. Interesting. So not a typical Kaigalichu deck. We, uh, we've won, like, one match today. We are slowly sliding downwards. I'm sure he could go Shard Reap and kill the Jankbot. Our hand's still pretty good post-Jankbot, but Shard Reap would, would make it so he could possibly win this game. Alrighty. This is my favorite part of the day, the part of the day where we attack with Jankbot. Even if it's three shards, that's still good here. Purge, wild shard, charge colossus, okay. So purge is less than ideal, but uh, this coming into play and giving us, you know, a bunch of charges is not the worst. Um... The old turn four charge Colossus. Jankbot attacked. We won. Weird. Weird. Uh, I'm going to board in Chomps just because he's likely bringing in closed coffins. And that card's while it's not perfect against us is kind of annoying. Um, I don't think we really need Succulent Cluckadons in this matchup. So uh, I'm actually going to bring in two Return to the Soils as well. Do I want Wrathwood Colossus? It's really good against my opponent when he doesn't have closed coffins going. Eternal Sage is probably medium. Crocosaur is fine. Green Paw is fine. Hey, I'm just going to save. This is fine. We don't need the Wrathwood Colossus. I missed it. Nephilim Army said thanks for the games at the end of the last one. Ah, uh, jeez! I'm such a professional. It's not a turn three jank bot, but it'll do pig. That'll do. That'll do pig. 
even resistant to Inquisition. Got Jinkbot through an Inquisition. This is so good. Hi, Toddler. How you doing? Do not shut my computer off. I'm gonna get a Sapphire with this. Hey, what's wrong? Can, can you come up here? Oh, you need diaper change? Turn, turn through your ears pretty good. Play that out. Let's see what wins. Turn three runner on the player. Turn four Jankbot on the draw. The good news is most of his removal that kills Jankbot is extinction. So if he wants to take the Jankbot off the table, he's probably going to have to wipe away his board. I'm going to cycle this shard. It ends up. And get a second Sapphire Threshold here in case we draw a Mass Poly Dingler at some point. Play this, play Jankbot. Can this make it free? Yep. All right, got a shard back. Can Jankbot do it? Yes, he can. Um, I'm gonna block the rabbit here. It's a little. It sucks a little bit because if he hits the 33%, he can finish this with Vampire Kiss, and he missed, so that's sweet. But this is probably an extinction here, and I just want to not take the extra four. He knows we have another jank bot in hand. Because he still just saw it off the vampire princess. Alright, I'm going to take a... Ooh. What does he have? He just want to hold the extinction for the post, post jank bot trigger? Sure. Just like in case I play the second one out. Shard, shard, shard. Yep, take it. Jankbot ramps me three. Yep, that's fine. Let's just play Lanu Pause Sight out here. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate this and draw some of these cards. Hopefully we don't draw actions that the princess can take away. I feel like he had extinction and then didn't play it because he thought we'd just play out the second jank bot. But there's no reason to play a second jank bot out here against an extinction deck. Alright, Croc's pretty good too. So I'm assuming he's going to extinction us next turn. And this draws a card from the Line Plus site. Sitting in a pretty good spot here. Sees the croc soar. You gotta catch the extinction in butt if you got it. Wow, just doesn't doesn't have it. Okay. Well let's play this out for now. Um <laughs> Attack with Jankbot, I guess. Trigger. Resource, resource. Okay. Well, Jankbot's played six resources out of our deck. Um, huh. I 
I'm just gonna play this Aborian Root Father out here and get some extra damage in. It says quick and plus power, so when it comes into play, it's gonna give my jank bot plus eight, plus eight. I guess I should have waited for no blocks. I should have did this in the wrong step, but I don't think he has any quick troops in his deck. Kill my Aborian Father, sure. Still gets eight, eight. Yep. I'm we'll gonna go ahead and play this Crocosaur out and eat both my opponent's guys. If he has another kill, he can kill the Crocosaur in response, but that's fine. Or he doesn't, okay. I'm putting my opponent on not having the extinction at this point, but... Wow, really? Just like... Okay, maybe he was waiting to try and draw, like, closed coffins to get the second jank bot out of my hand? Infinite gas in the tank, even if he extinctions us again here. It's funny how our jank bot actually hit six lands in two triggers, and it just didn't matter. Freak of nature, sure. I like when they put up a fight. We get more jank bot triggers when they put up a fight. <laughs> All right, still just nine for nine on jank bot making resources. Excellent. The nice thing is those resources are giving us charges, so we got that going for us. I'm going to go ahead and play Cosmic Shaman out just to gain some life. Draw some cards. Sage equals win there. Oh, you're right, it does, doesn't it? No, he would have been able to block. He'd have been able to block. Look at Maddie, we're going to win a whole match. We're getting janky. Win a janktastic match. This deck can't actually be good, right? Uh, commercial, diaper change, more, more magic, more hex, more TCG.
Yes, we are Cosmic Rank. We're Cosmic Rank 17. Uh, let's work on this deck a little bit and think about, like, this is still just the first the first iteration we just kind of threw together. Let's fix some actual problems the Jankbot deck has. So it seems like we're soft to the flying troops. Like, I feel like we can beat Prophecy Burn, but we're not beating the Knob Gobblers out of, out of the... Out of that deck. So, what are what are some cards we can play to beat the gobblers? These winds of change actually never come in. The Wrathwood Colossuses aren't great. The Carnosaurs are medium. So, do we just want to like put like a bunch of Gale Force in the board here? We could put like two or three of these in the board. We could also play some uh, like some Repel. We could even play Repels in the main deck. Just as, like have some removal. The problem is Repels not a good hit off Jank bots. So maybe we want it in the reserves. If you like four repels and three gale forces, Dreamwalker. Just it's like a three four with flight. Are small hedges I could make in the main deck? The blue red prowess is 56 in the standard open. Um, I didn't look at that deck specifically, but I do know that people that got about 56 probably finished with a record of 9, 5, and 1, which is a pretty medium record overall. So I'd be, you know, there's very possible that deck was just a fluke. So, are there any other like main deck hedges we could do to beat gobblers and stuff like that? I feel like there aren't really. We could play like repels. Oh, I guess this card's not awful, right? Living totem. That's kind of slow though, right? Fearless Fray. This doesn't answer Gobbler. Yeah, Living Totem is just like a uniquely powerful card, and we generally have a lot of resources. Uh, we're playing Dreaming Fox. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put in four rep four repels and three gale forces and see if that helps a little bit here. Maybe maybe even just eight. Let's just do Let's just do all of it. Just four repel, four gale force. The extra return to the soil I really don't need. Yeah, let's do this. Sapper's charge. Ooh, I really like that. That's that's actually really good. This is a card we can hit off Jankbot that's reasonable too, because it doesn't just like Huh. Oh, repel having to hit my own Jankbot. Yeah, Totem Trap's better for that, you're right. I really like this. I might I might work those in the main deck. Totem trap sounds good for the board though. What can I cut? Hex versus MTG, the pros and cons. Um, 
the pros are that if you want to play it on the computer, Hex's digital client is awesome. The design space in Hex is also great too because it's digital. It can do things that paper card games can't do, so there's more more design space in that aspect, which is fun, in my opinion. So if I want to fit, if I want to fit these sapper charges in here, I want to cut four cards. I, I guess I don't even technically have to cut four cards. Like we we could just like play four more cards, right? How lazy is that? I don't think I want four Lanu pods. We've drawn multiples more than once. I think I just want three. And I guess I can move this extra chomp to the board. Yeah, I can move this extra chomp to the board. And I'm at 152. 152 and 150, just about the same. All right, let's do it. Gosh, we're putting thought into a jank bot deck. What is this? What is the world coming to? Uh, Quiet Sam, you should check out. Uh, you should check out this article. It's a really my first one. It's just like a really quick sound bites overview of like some of the big differences between Hex and Magic. But someone said Paper Magic or Hex. Honestly, if I could play Hex for the amount of money I play Paper Magic for on the regular, I would probably play a whole lot more Hex than Magic. And I think that's true for a lot of people. In all honesty. Like, I think the fact that you can aspire to make money playing Magic is a big part of what makes people play it over other, other possible TCGs. You know, like, I, I, I effectively pay my mortgage playing Magic, so, like... Oh, no! Alright, we're gonna restart real quick here. So, uh, I'm playing Hex on an unsupported platform, and occasionally... Occasionally it freaks out. So I'm running the Windows version of Hex on Linux via Wine, which is not supported. So sometimes you'll see me restart like that. I like how this... This deck is just like the, like we, we, we sign up with Jankbot and we just like summon the Kaigalichu players into the queue. Keep hands. I disconnected and reconnected and my opponent used more time on the clock, yep. I mean, travel's, travel's interesting. I don't hate travel. It's just not, you know. I do definitely like the fact that I can play, play Hex from my basement. What you got? Not a rabbit on two. No, that's not the scary rabbit on two, at least. Ooh, opponent's playing a bit of a Kaigalichu brew, it looks like. Crack this, go get another wild here since Croc takes triple wild. Play another wild, play out the second immortal tears that we drew here. Let's see if he's got a turn three rabbit. So this card that keeps cards keep getting revealed here. What Cottontail Explorer does when it comes into play, it reveals the bottom three cards of my opponent's deck, and it puts any resources revealed that way into my opponent's hand, and the rest get put into the bin. So my opponent's bin some cards here. To start your turn. If there are three or more, whenever the troop enters your crypt, put a soul counter on this. There are three or more. Return it to play. Interesting. Inquisition. Sure. I do not have a jank bot, sir. So take what you would like. Took 
infinite tricks away. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this. Might as well get a second sapphire since we drew this. And I am, this gives some information about what's in our hand, what we drew for the turn after Inquisition Dust, but I'd much rather play it without getting the temporary resource now. I don't want to conceal information and then have it cost us actual tempo later by not having a shard that makes a temporary resource. Because VK of this turn is going to be kind of scary. have a lot of troops in our hand. Taking the infinite tricks was good too because it allowed him to uh, take our four drop away. Just another little bunny foo foo. All right, well it turned over some more stuff. Well, or Borean's eulogy is pretty good. So disciple that has two counters on it, and this disciple has six now, so it's going to come right back into play. We're taking a lot of damages very quickly here. Mass Polydingler is a great draw if we can live to get to it. If we can live to get to it, Mass Polydingler is going to be most excellent. So he's going to get to play the Eulogy this turn. So these three shards are going to get us our champion ability on time to draw two more cards, and then that will hopefully let us cast Mass Polydingler. The trick is, are we going to be able to live four more turns to do that without having played anything relevant in the first four turns? Unfortunately, we lost that infinite tricks. Opponent's playing a little bit more aggressive Kaigalichu build. Normally we have a little bit more time than this in this type of matchup. That's why I kept a hand without any acceleration or a three drop in it. So this card, whenever a troop enters play under his control, it gets plus one, plus one permanently for each troop in his crypt. And right now there are one, two, three, four, five, six troops in his crypt. So every troop he plays gets plus six, plus six. Yeah, that's a giant battle hopper. Looking pretty dead. Alright, that's a card that could get us back in this, I guess. Buys us some time. So Balthazar, when it comes into play, it gains life equal to the highest toughness among troops you control and draws cards equal to the highest power. Maybe I should have played Crocosaur there. I don't know, it's tough. I would have had to play the Wild Shard out for that, though. So this turn, we get to chump his six power guy and eat two one power guys. And the next turn, play Balthazar, gain three, draw four. Yes, yeah, so maybe I should have done that. No, it's close. Cottontail Explorer, that's huge. It depends on the format you're expecting. The uh, the pile of engineered explosives in the sideboard are mostly there for um, beating Merfolk and things like uh, Death Shadow Zoo and Infect. So if you're not expecting a lot of those decks, you could definitely get away with fewer engineered explosives. What you taking, bud? Pick your favorite. Oh. Hopefully he just takes Dingler, and then we can... Yeah, so the line here, I think, is to Belth into a Purge, hopefully. So he's going to crunch with the team. Defend, so chump there, eat these two, which is going to bring another one of these 1-1s one -ones back into play next turn. I think that puts us to dead on board, but we'll play it out and make sure where that's actually the case. None of those were purged, it's a little unfortunate.
It's a 9-9 with speed because of the eulogy. Yeah, we are dead. So we want the extra want the extra constant hate in the form of Chompy and Sapper's charge doesn't seem like it's gonna be particularly good, so let's cut down three of those. I don't think anything else seems great, so I'm just gonna do that pretty minimal sideboarding. Build a good Shingami deck. It's a neat build around me card. How hard does he keep up with both Hex and Magic? Uh, if these weren't jobs, I'm not sure. If I, I didn't have time to devote to these games like they're jobs, because they are, they are, you know, some work for me. Um, I don't think I would have enough time to keep up with both. Like it's, it's, you know, it's not easy. I spend a lot of time, a lot of time doing both. You know, just even in these streams, it's a minimum of like, you know, eight to ten hours a week playing Hex to keep up with things and just for entertainment's sake, and then. You know, Magic, I probably do, you know, the weekend trips and prepping for those weekend trips, probably anywhere between 40 and 80 hours a month of Magic. You know, 40 plus hours of, there are 30 plus hours of Hex a month, probably 40 plus hours of Magic when during my travel seasons. Forty to eighty is pretty conservative. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Especially if you count in travel time. I'm not counting travel time in there, man. I'm just like counting counting time spent in the convention center. I like Plague Magic, the time we spend at your house. Turn to Runier Hierophant on the play. Sign me up, we broke it. Oh, cards, cards busted. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that also doesn't count, like, you know, the hours spent messaging back and forth about deck lists and all that other, all the other stuff that goes into it. All right. Well, draw three off of that's pretty good. He's going to have to discard two of them. So in reality, it's like loot a little bit, but we'll see. Grab a diamond. Uh, we already have Mass Poly in my hand, so I'm going to go ahead and get a second Sapphire with the Shard Call. And then I assume my opponent's going to... Huh, this is an interesting question. I think I'm willing to trade this for Runeer Hierophant connecting, so I think this attack is free because he's just going to chump the Runeer. Yep. So free point of damage. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't love trading this, but if I'm trading this for a Rhino, basically, that's great. You are, you are not wrong, Dex. It's been a good year, though. I actually, it's been, it's been a good, like, my seasons are kind to me. I am, this is my fourth, fourth, so this is 2016, so I started playing Magic competitively quite a bit in 2013, and in 13, 14, and 15, I was in the black for playing Magic, so hard to be, hard to be too upset with that. Crunch. Yeah, right now time.
Yeah, it's we're. I mean, we're definitely no, you know, Dota when it comes to games. If he crunches in with this, I'm happy to trade my lineup off for it. I think here. Am I? Am I happy to trade my lineup off for it? No, that's not true. I'm just gonna jump with the Rhino. Ooh, a piece of candy. So this is Prophesied, so it's plus two, plus two larger by default. Prophesied card makes Lanupaw get larger. Troop entering play makes Runear Hierophant get larger. Just, just all the goodies. Yeah, I'm just going to crunch with both of these. I'll chump with my Howling Brave on his, his Runear Hierophant next turn, I think. I guess if he goes, like, troop into removal spell here, I'm forced to chump. So maybe I shouldn't have attacked with this. That's fine. Pick your favorite eight drop. You have to take mass poly, right? You just never beat this card. Yeah. Let's use the threshold when it comes into play. Let's go ahead and cycle this in case we hit a, a shard. We did not. Yeah, this is why. This is why we cut the extra one of those. And we just don't have good attacks now, which kind of sucks. Alright, that makes Lanupaw bigger because it's prophesied. Let's go ahead and do this and draw some cards here. If I figure it wasn't a good attack, I don't think so. I am just going to play out another Lanupaw here since I have three of them in my hand now. It makes both of these larger. And it prophesizes some more stuff here. And then next turn, if he wants to ship with this dork, I can just jump with this Lanupaw. Eulogy, sure. So he doesn't have kill up now, which means this infinite trick shifting onto this Runier Hierophant will likely end the game if he doesn't find Extinction ASAP. Attack first. Yeah, the, the attack first was free. You are correct. He had just chumped, but you're right. You are correct that I missed a free... I missed a free him chumping. 100% correct. Alright, up to 35, gaining a bunch of life. Even if he does have Extinction here, we've got Charge Colossus and Lanupaw left over in hand. Just got a shard, that's good for us. That's true. I didn't think about that. All right, play this chlorophyllia that's free because of the two landing paws. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and ship with these two dorks here. I'm not committing anything else to the board. I'm just going to crunch through them with these guys, I think. I guess I could have played Charge Colossus and that lets me ship with this one too. Seems like something for next turn though. All the way up to 45 here. He needs extinction. Uh, one of these comes back. Okay. Okay. 
Another Runier, okay. It's kind of large off the bat because of Eulogy. Still can't do anything though, which is nice. And just keep gaining a bunch of life here. Can no longer attack with the 7-7 seven, seven Lanopaw, which feels kind of bad. Uh, crunch for 11. I'm going to go ahead and activate uh, Dreaming Fox this turn since I have 14 charges thanks to the Charge Glosses, so I can double Oracle Song next turn if we need to. This loop is pretty is pretty good. Just having a bunch of Disciples going. Wow, that's a good draw. That's really unfortunate. We've got four chomps in our deck at least. Wow, what a beating. So Drown Trine says you can only draw one card a turn. Which means... Which means these Oracle songs just don't do anything. If I would have done this ahead of time, if I would have done this one turn sooner, I could have gotten one of these Oracle songs off, or both of them possibly. So, we went from being reasonably ahead to behind if he, he, him having outs to catch back up now, basically. There might be merit to playing this out, but I think I want to save it for a follow-up sweeper. These disciples are going to get really gross if he finds an extinction. We need to find, like, Jankbot or... Just like his two best draws in a row. So need to find Mass Poly Dingler or Purge ASAP and just can't can't draw extra cards to do it. Alright, that's Naborian Root Father at least I suppose. Hopefully he gets aggressive and attacks with all three of his minions this turn. Just like, don't draw something to block with, attack with all your minions, a Borean Root Father to kill you. Please, no follow up. Please, no follow up. Please, no follow up. Please, no. God bless America. Mass Poly. Balthazar. Okay, so. Hmm. Well, I guess we see if he if he lets us kill him first here. So this is thirteen. This is twenty-three, thirty-three. So I can play this out and not die. So I guess we'll do that. Maybe I'm supposed to have just Balthazard there, since it's prophesied and just like draw five game. No, I can't draw five because there's a drown trend on the table. Right. Right, that's the problem. Alright. Maybe it'll be our turn to rip a perfect one. We do have a lot more cards that we have to rip perfect into, so. A little bit frustrating, but good game.
Howdy, clunky man. Good afternoon. I mean, we got runner, runner to lose that game. We were in a very commanding position for that entire match, and then he hit, he hit drown shrine into extinction and in, in running draws. I could have sequenced better by playing the charge colossus a turn earlier, but I was like trying to play around a sweeper. And if I would have played the charge colossus a turn earlier, then I would have been able to double oracle song the turn before he ripped the drown shrine. So I guess I should have been more aggressive with that. Uh, Dax, I'm traveling the next six weeks in a row, so we're just gonna have a long stream, uh, when I, my travel season's over. You have to figure out, too, what I want to do for... I also have to figure out what I want to do for the magic half of a long stream. Like, it's probably not feasible to do a live paper into Hex, but I might do, like, X-Mage, or maybe we'll get drunk and do do some magic online into, into Hex. Afraid to shave the beard again. It came back. It's back. It took about two weeks. I did have to take a top eight photo at an event with uh, with a naked face though, which was not great. So what does this champion do for three charges? Sacrifice the troop. Another troop permanently gets plus two, plus two. Okay. No wait! No! No wait! Come back! I played the wrong shard! I wanted to I wanted to play the infinite tricks! No! Oh, everything's gone so wrong. I sequenced my shard super incorrectly. We gonna die, and it's all my fault. play green pull out now because I can chump block this rabbit for a little while. Oh, you know what? I'll bet this is a monsoon. So I was thinking about trading my green paw for this rhino, but I'll bet this is a monsoon, which makes that a bad, a bad line. Sacrifice a troop, draw three cards, yep. So I'm definitely playing this. I think I'm just playing infinite tricks out here and shifting steadfast and... Yeah, I'm just going to shift steadfast and life drain over to my green paw. Yes, you can you can double block in Hex, but I'm pretty sure this card that my opponent has tunneled is most likely the card that brings my opponent's troops from his crypt back into play, so I don't want to kill this. Yep, and that's exactly what it is. So when this comes into play, it's going to return the troops my opponent sacrificed back to play. Oh, 
So he's going to crunch here. This has rage, so we're going to shroom pin. Chump the 9-9 most likely here. If he's got a targeted removal spell, we're going to be in a bad spot because it lets him pick off my green paw emancipator. Next turn, we get to play a shard and activate my champion ability to draw some cards. We'll see if I want to attack. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just these two that attack. Uh, this block might be risky. I don't know. I'm trying to think about what he could have here. I think he just wants this to die. Maybe he's got something that gives like minus one, minus one here. Nope, just an extinction, so it's a free attack, sure. Alright, purge. Let's go ahead and draw some cards here with my champion ability. Clockadon comes into play, gains us some life, nice 4-4 body. Bone's got a lot of cards left in their hand. We've got a lot of cards too, but three of them are shards, unfortunately. Are we playing the same person twice in a row with a different champion now, or is this just the second eulogy, eulogy disciple deck we're playing in a row? Extinction is great, spell shield is not. I think extinction's fine. Extinction's a type of mechanic you want to be in the game. Keeps keep some things from becoming degenerate. Need to get another wild here in case we draw a crocosaur. You wanna sit in dead slap? Oh. You're a good giant toddler, you know that? So I'm gonna go ahead and crunch for four here. Uh, purge only hits troops. Doesn't hit, uh, doesn't hit constants. This is likely another monsoon. Start of your turn, create a random non-unique shin hair. Okay. You know, this attack was probably bad last turn. Yeah, I think this attack was bad because this is going to get to come back into play and trigger the eulogy. I'm just going to purge my guy. So it voids his guys that don't share a type with my Cluckadon. Crunch for four here. We're near Hierophant, sure. Thing gets huge. I feel like I'm supposed to cycle this in an effort to try and find like Purge, Jankbot, or Mass Polydingler. I'm sure we're just gonna draw Botto shards like this and make it look silly that we cycled away our Root Father, but I feel like Root Father's not winning us the game and we need to look for cards that can actually win the game at this point. This is a monsoon that's gonna bring something back into play and all those things will be huge. So we're going to attack for 8, 16, 20 here. So... Oh, there's Shin here. You control have two twos. This is 21. All right, so we have to jump, which means Purge is no longer an out. So we need to draw exactly Mass Polydingler here. Have four of them in the deck. We're dead. 
I mean, Extinction's only everywhere right now as a byproduct of the fact that Runeir High Offense is a very powerful card that you need to have an answer to. That's that's why that card is everywhere. Again, just gonna cut Sapper's charges and bring in uh, bring in more constant hate for the eulogies. Prohibitively expensive in like terms of dollar amount. It's funny, I can always tell which people which people play magic and which ones just play hex when you talk about the relative price of cards, because like you talk about extinction being like a fourteen dollar card and you're just like, okay, whatever, it's a fourteen dollar card, you just like buy the fourteen dollar card and play the game. And hex players are like, That's really expensive and you're like, nah, it's really not. Uh, this hand has Jankbot in the opener, so we're never going to mulligan. No, we're playing this card called Jankbot that requires you to have at least 150 cards in your deck. Because it's really powerful. When it attacks, you get to play three random cards out of your deck for free. What does this do? It's the minion. That's oh, the AA minion. Okay. Alright. Let's play Immortal Tears. Get a diamond with this, so we can play shard call next turn and get a get a sapphire. On the following turn, we can cast our jank bot and hopefully it will live. Live, jank bot, live! I will it. Angus is awake from his nap already? I guess he was down for two hours. Put this back into our deck, draw a new card. My opponent doesn't have blood blood threshold temporary resource extinction next turn. Jankbot could could run away with this game like he's been known to do. Alright, there's the blood threshold. One time, no sweeper. Okay, that's a battle hopper. He's just making his rune ear big enough to block. Uh, not blocking this. Because when this dies, it goes back under tunneling. Alright. Alright. All right, survey says. Croco, Cosmic Shaman, Purge. Ooh, baby, baby. Got him in the right order, too. Good luck, Godspeed. God bless you, Jankbot, and your janky, janky ways. Holy Jankbot, indeed. That's right. That is definitely the proper emote for this situation. Yeah, like, if there was a... If there was like a 5 cost or 6 cost diamond sweeper, like 7 is so prohibitive and this gets blown out when they kill your troop. So like, 
if there was just like even even a five cost diamond sweeper like a like a double diamond threshold destroy troops plus do something special or like a double double diamond like put troops in the bottom of their deck or like v exile void all troops like something like that And like, don't get me wrong, Purge and Mass Poly Dingler are great, are interesting design. They're just super expensive in terms of what they do. Like, uh, resource wise. This hand's close and doesn't have jank bots, so we're gonna mulligan it. Uh, this hand seems fine. It's got an accelerant in it. Yeah, yesterday's not a sweeper. Yesterday's just an awkward card that happens to center drives with prophecy troops. What does Judgment do? I'm not familiar with that card. Yeah, that's not playable, I don't think. No Runear Hierophant yet either. Let's activate this. And play out the Succulent Cluckadon, which eats his eats his guy. So Sapper's Charge is a one cost artifact that you can pay two to deal two damage to a champion or troop at quick speed. So this is one of our ways to try and hedge against uh McBombas, basically. So you have the extinction. It's an okay spot to cast it. Clear up both my dorks. So this is probably going to eat my... Oh, making my Cluckadon worse. Okay. Cosmic Shaman's not bad. Uh, probably just playing this out as a resource, I think. Skipping this would much rather preserve my own life total than try and get aggressive with this. <laughs> Alright, there's the eulogy. So if he attacks me now with the minion, I think I'm just going to take two for a little while because every time this would die, it tunnels and said and comes back two turns later with more power. Yeah, so I'm just going to take my licks from this. Alright, that's good. So to go ahead and activate this and then play my Cosmic Shaman out here, which gains me life equal to its toughness, in this case 5, and has flight. And then the next troop in my deck will also gain me life equal to its toughness and have flight. So crunch for 2 now. Takes the trade there, cause, probably because he's the eulogy out. This in the air is going to kill my opponent fairly quickly, which is nice. I should have attacked before playing this technically, it was sloppy sequencing there. I didn't have enough for Shaman last turn. Shaman is six. I just, this was the first turn I had five and then. It's a pretty big, pretty big lady. Big Mamma Jamma. All right, we're hopefully just gonna race in the air here. Because the Sapper's Charge can deal damage to a champion as well, which means, um... Which means he's dead in two, technically. We can Sapper's Charge him for two down to ten, and then this does five and five in the air. 
Next turn, we're going to get to play this Shard Prism out and then activate Howling Brave and jam this Charge Colossus in. Uh, no blocks here, and just take my six. I'm just going to go ahead and activate this this turn. Put him down to ten, so that way he's dead on my next turn. Ooh, that's pretty good. But I picked... I picked the wrong threshold on that Shard of Fate, so I can't actually play that. Yeah, I think I'm just supposed to play this and play the Charge Colossus and then have him dead. Have him dead next turn to you, this guy in the air. And again, I'm going to go ahead and make a Oracle Song this turn, so that way next turn I can make another one and drop to four cards if I need to. So this makes a random, non-unique Shin here every turn for my opponent. Last turn it made a 1-1. One, one. Revert. So he's destroying this and reverting this. Reverting this doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm not dead, right? He has to be able to kill this. I'm getting attacked for not lethal. Not lethal, yeah, just 18 here. If he's got kill, we can't win the game. Oh, wow. That's really good. So I guess to give this minus five, minus five. And that I'm probably dead now. I guess I could hit purge exactly. Good sequence opponent. Yeah. So I need to hit purge. Mass Polydingler I can also cast. We've got eight live draws here. You got one draw step to hit uh, eight different cards. Alright. Well, play this. Pretty sure we're drawn to it at this point though. It's unfortunate. No ball. All right, we are dead. GG's opponent. Go ahead and concede. Sounds like my oldest, my youngest, is awake. So I'm gonna run upstairs and grab him from his crib. We'll be right back with uh, a few more matches to hex before we close the day out. Thanks for hanging out, folks.